Hi everyone, I'm Jasmine Alessio. I'm Miss Teen Australia New South Wales International 2019 and this is my interview with The Pageant Project. It's Adrian from The Pageant Project, and I'm here with Miss Teen Australia, New South Wales, International 2019, Jasmine Alessio. Hi. Did I get it right? You got it right. I, I, I got Round it right. Round of for Adrian. <laughs> Tenth time. Jasmine, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. That's good. And Jasmine, why don't we start by introducing you and your pageant background? Yes. So, hi everyone, I'm Jasmine, and I started my uh, pageant journey when I was, uh, I think it was 15 years old, so no, I was turning 15, so mm -hmm. I would have been 14. So I started my very first pageant, um, it was Miss Teen Australia, so it was more like, it wasn't a proper pageant, it was more like a modelling contest, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so from there I went to the nationals and then they had their big nationals, and from there I didn't really get much out of it, but um, that's how I started with the whole pageant experience because then I went into like the CM model search. That was another modeling that's thing. country girls. What does that see? No, CM model search. That's run through Miss World, I'm pretty okay. sure. Yeah. And then I did Country Girl Australia. Um, and then from there I did Face of the Globe. And I then did Continents and then um, like Maggie, that one. Um, my very first pageant mum actually entered me in it. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. I always, like when I was younger, I was like, oh, I really want to do like modeling and something along those lines. So when mum put me in that, I was like, okay, let's give this a go. I don't know what this is about. But... So hang on, she entered you and you didn't know? Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah, That's just one day actually... she came to me and she was like, oh, I entered you in this. And I was like, okay, all right. That's exactly what happened <laughs> to Brittany Sheath. Yeah. She, she came back from school one day and there was like an envelope saying that congratulations yeah in it so okay yeah i think mum did that through star now as well yeah yeah okay. yeah so why so why did she decide to enter you into the pageant was it because you were saying that you wanted to give modeling a go or was it because of pageantry um well when i was younger i always used to say that i like i wanted to do modeling i wanted to yeah. do, like go on the catwalk and all that so i guess that's where mum like kind of looked at that and was like oh maybe if i like started her from somewhere like that you've always got to start somewhere so I guess that's the way mum thought of it and when I was younger I was like really shy I was only like outgoing and all that around my family and I wasn't really outgoing like I wouldn't come and do this when I was younger so um I guess that's where like mum's perspective was on it so yeah. yeah and then from there I guess because you were actually so how, how have you found because a lot of people who wanted to be models first off mm -hmm. and then entered it sort of with modelling and then found that pageantry and found it was completely different. Mm -hmm. How has your journey been along that one in terms of modelling versus the pageantry side of things? Modelling is definitely definitely different to pageantry, mm -hmm. but for some reason, like, I, when I entered my first proper pageant, which would have been Face of the Globe, Australia, I felt like I liked that whole lot more because there was a more charity aspect to it and you actually got out into your community. And I think that's where my confidence grew because I was actually going out, talking to people, explaining what I was doing. So I guess that's why I probably have stuck with the more pageantry side yeah. because I'm, like, growing more than just walking on stage than, yeah. like, showing off clothing and all that. I'm actually showing my personality on stage. So I guess that's where I've probably went towards pageantry. You said, you said you were shy. So how did you find it pageantry where you have to go out to appearances and you've got to go, most people have to go up and talk to people. Mm -hmm. How did you find that? I, you're only 18 now. Yeah. So when you say you're yeah, younger, younger, it's like it kind of been that long ago, <laughs> but you would have been in high school. And a lot of people yeah. go through the awkward teenager stage, especially 15, I found 15, 16, the, the most awkward. Yeah. So how did you find that having to get out there, get out of your shell? Um, it was probably quite difficult, but with like the support of my mom and my dad and like my siblings around me, it kind of helped me um, like go out there and tell people about what I'm doing. Um, yeah, it, would, it was really hard, especially going through high school and like mm -hmm. when you're sh like displaying yourself on social media and showing what you're doing and your friends are like, what are you, what, what are you doing that for? Mm -hmm. Like, so mom, when she originally put me into this, she thought like, oh, let's give this a go. Don't worry about what anyone thinks. So, yeah. Did you, were you lucky enough, you talked about your schoolmates, mm -hmm. were you lucky enough to have a fairly supportive, because like, when you put up, I guess, when you start an Instagram or something like that, and yeah. you start taking photos of yourself with your sash and your tiara, 
some people might think that you're a little bit, you know, Different. full of yourself. Yeah. Did you deal with that at all? Or did you have a supportive? Um, yes and no. Like sometimes they would like make fun of me, but other times like they would support and be like, oh, that's really cool, Jazz. Like you've actually, you're out there and getting things, giving things a go. But then sometimes they'd be like, oh, why are you doing that? Like yeah. it's kind of like a mixed thing with friends. Like some will support someone. So yeah. you can't have it all. Like you can't make everyone like what you're doing. So. Very true. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to say your title again because mm -hmm. I can't. Yep. <laughs> but can you tell the lovely people watching more about this particular system? Yeah. And there are a lot of pageant systems out there. Mm -hmm. So why did you particularly enter this one? Um, so I wanted to enter this pageant, um, I think it was two years ago, but like so another opportunity came up. So I went with that. But then when I um, went, because I've been to the national finals for international Australia for three years now, mm -hmm. and every year I've always loved the layout, what they stand for. And I think that's why I decided to come and join this pageant. So when I joined it in November last year, I... Um, I started, I got the national final sash, I got out in my community and I only had a short amount of time compared to everyone else because I think I was one of the later ones that joined. So um, Ferriel was very supportive and she would always like, yep, you're, you're, you go girl, like you're doing great. Um, so I guess that's why. And because it's very charity based, like I said before, I love getting out there and giving my, like getting out there in the community and raising money for my platform, which is the Heart Foundation. Um, so yeah, I guess that's why I've chosen this one because they're so supportive and I've met so many great girls along this pageant. Um, so yeah. And we'll definitely come back to your advocacy because yes. it's close, close to your heart, yeah. no pun intended. <laughs> um, but talk to me more about Ferial because I just interviewed Ruby mm -hmm. um, Adamson last weekend, who's your sister queen. Yes. And she had a lot of good things to say about Ferial. Yeah. And there are a lot of directors out there. Not all of them are, are lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so tell tell us more about Ferial and how you found working with her. So Ferial, she's she's very supportive. Like we would um we have this thing called like like a connect thing. So every um so often we'll get on there and we'll talk about what we're doing next and Ferial will discuss like what a better way to get out there and she's just a very supportive director and I think that's amazing to have because you always want someone backing you and mm. always telling you keep going keep going you're doing great instead yeah. of having someone that's like I'm just gonna sit back and you do you so yeah yeah she's she's great and she's an image consultant yes what Ruby was saying yeah <laughs> now Ruby told me about the color blue do you <laughs> know what Ferial said about the color blue no it shows that you're passionate oh well, that's good then. I'm very passionate. <laughs> Fair enough. So you're obviously very passionate. Yes. Um, now, so you have how many sister queens are? So how many title holders are there? Um, so I think there's six of us. So we have our Goodwill Ambassador, mm -hmm. Davina. We have our Ms. Australia International, Shell. Mm -hmm. We have our Mrs. Australia International, Tracy. We have uh, Ruby, Miss yeah. Teen Australia International. We have my other sister queen, Miss Teen Australia Queensland International, mm -hmm. uh, Maddie. And then there's me. Okay. So you know all of them fairly well, I mm -hmm. imagine, because you spent Now I have, yeah. yeah. Okay. So who's the funniest? Tracy's very outgoing. <laughs> she's Tracy. yeah. <laughs> I tried interviewing Tracy. Yeah. Name right. So she she's fun, she's funny. Yeah, she's very outgoing. And then Shell and Davina, they're quite supportive. Like they you'll, they'll bring their calm nature. I've got to know Shell quite well, so um, we've gotten along pretty well. We always because we think we look alike. So I always say that she's my mum because we oh, like kind, kind of see of, it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now that you mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So who's the quirkiest one? We have to say Ruby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I probably agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> she was talking about how much she loves horror games and how much she wants to. Yeah, I watched She's fascinated by serial killers. Yeah, I saw her interview. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And if you were stranded on a desert island and you had to pick one of them to be stranded there with for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. who would you pick? Probably Michelle. Why? Because like I said, she's like my mom. So I'd like, okay. I'd definitely like to be on the street of Ireland with someone that's like similar to my mom because me and my mom, we're so close. So, yeah, I'd well, be Well, on that subject, talk, mm -hmm. talk to me about your mom because every time I've seen you, you've been with your mom. Yes. So <laughs> how has that relationship, how did the relationship start? I mean, she's your mom, how yeah. did the relationship start? But yeah. obviously, I mean, I've seen a lot of moms basically kick their daughter out. Like you do the pageant whilst I'll go and do something else. Yeah. But obviously, I mean, your mum brought you here, so she's not like that. So no. talk to me about the relationship you have with your mum. Uh, we are so close. It's, um, I guess, because she's, we, I have two older siblings, like three older siblings, so I have two sisters and a brother. Um, and 
they lived with their dad. So, and I, I we have different dads. So I guess kind of with that way, mum has like, cause I'm the youngest as well. And she's seen the way they have grown up and she's like probably made us more like close, I guess. Like she's very close with my other sister, Rachel as well. But um, I guess cause she always saw me as the child of going, oh, I want to do modeling. Like I want to mm. give that a go. And she, that's why I think she's kind of like, pushed me to do it because she's always pushing me to do things like getting myself out there and giving things a go yeah. and mum loves pageants she I always <laughs> try and make her join one but she just won't so I think if she gave it a go she'd like she'd like love it even more but I've seen her more on social than I've seen you <laughs> she, she gets in there she loves it and yeah gives her five cents worth yeah you said that your mum pushes you mm -hmm. like quite quite a lot mm -hmm. but I mean do you ever push back do you wish you'd ease off a bit or are you like okay that's good that's good I'll keep doing all this other stuff sometimes I do and sometimes I don't like I think it's good to have someone that pushes you to do things and yeah. tell you to get out there and give things a go but sometimes when I like just need a second I'm just like mom just slow sure. it down a little bit <laughs> yeah I have to sometimes just say just give me a second just let me work on something and then I'll come back to you so yeah, yeah. I, but I think it's good to have someone that pushes you and tells you to get out there oh absolutely Better yeah than having someone who doesn't care yeah obviously. definitely okay your advocacy mm -hmm. tell us about your advocacy and the story behind okay so I chose the heart foundation because I lost my grandfather to heart disease last February um we were very close I um when my mum would go to work and when I was like around three, four, five, before I started school, they would always, like Nuno, because I'm Italian, I called him Nuno, he um, would always look after me, always plays puzzles. And then we were, every time I used to go over his house, he'd always do like the sneaky 20 bucks, like don't tell Nen. <laughs> Is that an Italian thing? I don't know. I've heard about it in Italian families, but nowhere else. Yeah, he'd always used to do that. Um, and like always going over there and eating his food. That's probably like one of the things I miss the most is because we're Italian. We always like cook the food. Yeah, very big. So I think that's one of the things I miss the most. But one thing I always tell my family is I always will carry one thing from him, which is my nose. <laughs> Well, I do hope that you carry your nose with you. Yeah, because my dad, um, so Nuno is my dad's dad. So he has my Nuno's nose and then I have my dad's nose, which I always call it like the Italian bump there. Oh, okay. I couldn't see from, I can't see from yeah, this angle. Yeah, the okay, Italian bump. <laughs> yeah, okay, got it. Yeah, and then my auntie also has the nose and same with my uncle. Okay. So that's why I always said one thing I'll carry is his nose. So is that an Italian trait having the bump there? Is it? I personally think it, it is. Like I've seen most like most people that I know that are Italian, it all runs in my family that we always have this little bump. I'm going to be going out there after this. <laughs> always so noticing Italian, you're Italian. Italian. <laughs> yeah. So when you lost your grandfather, was it expected or was it out of the blue? Um, well, he always – so his first heart attack was a, like a long time ago. So I think it was even before I was born. So he actually needed to go back to the doctor to get it like checked up and get I think this other surgery which would help with the stents in his heart. But he never went back for that. So I think that's why that's why I encourage people to always go back to the doctor and get the checkup, especially if you had a heart attack beforehand. Um, now because he didn't go back, the he get like lots of heart attacks. There was one before his last heart attack that he had. He was really bad. And I remember sitting at the hospital and him looking at me saying, this is my last time I'm going to see you. And I'm like, no, it's not. Like, you still have more time. I said, don't give up just yet. Um, so when he had his last heart attack, which was in February, that one kind of it hit him pretty hard, I guess, and he was in hospital for a little while. Um and he couldn't have a surgery for it because it would have just impacted him so much because he's already had open heart surgery with it before. So he couldn't have gone and had it again because that would have definitely destroyed him, I guess. Um, but I always remember like the funny memories in the hospital, like especially last year, there was one time because like I said, he loves to cook. He had always like, because he was, I was sitting next to him. I can't imagine an Italian in hospital. <laughs> I was sitting, oh, we'd always bring him pasta so he would have something <laughs> from home yeah. there. But um, because of all his medication, he was kind of like out of it, I guess. And I was sitting next to him and he's grabbed my hand and he goes, did you just see the tomatoes fly in the room? I was like, what? He goes, yeah, did you see the tomatoes like fly across? I said, no, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. He goes, 
well, I saw them. I'm like, that's good that you saw them because, <laughs> like, his medication, he was oh, seeing okay. things. I thought he was making a joke. <laughs> no, and, it's from and the medication. He sees tomatoes, of course. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's kind of hard, I guess. Like, I don't – the heart attack wasn't expected, but it kind of was at the same time because yeah. he didn't go back to the doctors and get those checkups. Yeah. So what – I mean, you obviously have the advocacy mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. What would be your general message? So when you're advocating in terms of heart disease, mm -hmm. is your message like get a checkup, be aware? Like It's of kind of both. Like be aware of the signs because mm -hmm. men and female, they have different signs of having like a heart attack. Mm -hmm. So you always be aware of your signs. And I guess if you have had a heart attack or you feel like – you're getting these signs, definitely go to the doctor. Yeah. Like, it can be like that, honestly. Yeah. So just definitely go to the doctor is what I'm trying to kind of give my message out is be aware and get checked up. Yeah. What are, what are the, cla the classic signs? I'm trying to remember. It's like obviously a tightness in the chest. Um. So what like I said, mean? men and female have different, different ones. Right. So mainly for females, they feel very sick. They're very nauseous. Um, they'll get pain in their arms. Um, females don't really get it their chest. Um, but they'll Did you get. Put up a post about this. I seem to remember reading something about. I've this. put a few posts up about okay. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, they'll get pain probably like around their shoulder, like low, like upper back. Mm. But they won't get anything in their chest. But men, oh, okay. <clears throat> they'll get um, they'll get their chest, and they'll also um, like they'll get dizzy as well. So yeah, just being aware of those signs because it is different. You could just one day feeling, oh, I feel very sick, like it's yeah. just a tummy bug. But in reality, you might be getting like signs of having a heart attack. Yeah. I remember reading somewhere that women were actually had a particular risk because when they feel sick, women being women, they keep going on. Yeah. Like if you suddenly couldn't breathe, you'd know to go to the hospital. Yeah. But if a woman feels sick or gets a pain in her back, she will normally keep going. Oh, that's just from picking the kids up exactly. or that's just, oh, I just can't worry about going to the doctors. I have the kids to deal with. Like yeah. that's like a lot of females. So yeah, yeah. definitely being aware of those signs. So do you have a particular goal or objective with your advocacy? Is it to reach a certain number of people? Is it to try to stamp out the disease entirely? Is it a fundraising target? Um, I guess, story? yeah, kind of all of them. Like the more money we raise for the Heart Foundation, the more they'll go in for research programs to be able to inform people the signs, the like awareness about it, um, as well as like um, they do this thing where they have like – it's kind of like a re it's the research program pretty much where they'll um, inform people. So, yeah, the more money we raise, the more research programs will go out and then the more awareness is spread about it. So it's kind of like a target I'm trying to get with like raising awareness for the heart mm -hmm. foundation, like raising, sorry, funds for the heart foundation. So. They go hand in hand. Yeah, it oh, does. The more money, the more awareness. The more okay. awareness, the more money. Okay. Yeah. Switching back to pageantry for a second. Yes. I want to ask you the same two questions that I asked Ruby. Okay. So I'm fascinated to see what your answer is. So in terms of pageantry, mm -hmm. what has been the hardest lesson that you've had to learn? Um, hardest lesson. You have to kind of not be careful with who you trust, but like be aware mm -hmm. because sometimes like, especially with all the, like gossip and all that. So you just have to be aware of like, what you're telling, um, don't make up stuff. Like, it's not going to get you anywhere. Um, and always make sure you have supportive people around you because if you don't, that will kind of knock you back and you'll kind of be like, well, what am I doing here? Why am I doing this? Yeah. If I don't have the support, what's like – but I know you're doing it for yourself, but like at the same time you need people around you to help you keep going. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, definitely being like around who you trust and who's supporting you. Do you know – what what's a because that's obviously really important. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice to to young women or even slightly older women as to work out who it is that you can trust? Because knowing who to trust is important. But how yeah, do you how know? do you? Know? Yeah, that's a good thing. Um, um, I guess when you're at your lowest point mm -hmm. in life, it's who's going to come and help you. Yeah. Because I've sometimes like when I've been at my lowest point, I know who's going to be there to help yeah. me. So, and like when I'm at my lowest point and someone doesn't come, I'm like, oh, well, they obviously, That's they're not really caring or something. Yeah. 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 So guess, when, yeah, that's a really good answer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What do you think the biggest issue facing young women in Australia today is? Um, I guess it's the whole social media aspect. A lot of people only portray their the good things in life. Not a lot of people portray the bad things. So, a lot of people have those expectations of, oh, my life's got to look like that. Mm -hmm. I have to look like that. 
So I guess, yeah, social media is a big aspect. And what I say is don't worry about what people post. You just post yourself and the true you and that's all that's going to matter. Yeah. How often are you on social media just out of interest? I mean, I would assume it's going to be fairly often. Mm -hmm. You're queening, you're doing your thing. Yeah. And you're the right age to be on social media. So how often are you on it? Um, Well, along with work because I can't actually be on my phone while I'm working. So the only time I'll probably be on it is um, when I have to do a post, when I just feel like scrolling for the day and just having a look. Uh, Yep, this one. Um, Or either that I like, I don't message a lot of people, so I'm not really on there for talking and all that. So the best I'll be is on YouTube, watching YouTube videos. Mm. So I'll have my scroll for the morning, have my scroll for the afternoon, and then I'll just go on YouTube and watch YouTube videos or Netflix. Okay, so on the subject of YouTube, when are you (laughs) relaunching your channel? (laughs) I'm not too sure. I I really hope like... Tell people what what the name of your channel was. So my YouTube channel was called Jazzy G. And how did you introduce every video? Hi, welcome back to Jazzy G. Thank you for watching my videos. Did you have a way to sign up? Um, How did you finish? Thank you. Yeah. Strong. Yeah. I got to finish strong. So it was, I think it was, thank you for watching my videos. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. <laughs> and then I'd always have these little icons come in and like with a like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or the little subscribe button would come. So were the hand gestures part of it as well? Yeah. You did that into, do that again. What were the hand gestures? Hi everyone. Welcome back to Jazzy G. And Jazz then, hands. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Funny, Jazz, Jazz hands. hands. Okay. And then like like, you always got to like and don't forget to subscribe because the yeah. subscribe button would be down below. Yeah. So when are you going to restart your, your <laughs> I'm just putting that, that on the spot. I hope, like, I really hope I can do it sometime this year, like yeah. Raw Truths. Um, I really hope I could do it before I go to internationals to show a bit more about my journey and like do some yeah. vlogs of when I actually go out to the community and all that. So I really hope I can start it back this year. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. What's... What, what do you do in your spare time? What's the quirky side? What's the lesser known side? Or are you completely sane and normal? I am definitely not sane and normal. Okay, good. I am very crazy. Okay. Fill us in a little bit. So, okay, I'll... I'll by, by the way, I mean, you're following Ruby. It's pretty hard, actually. <laughs> As I was telling like Ruby in her interview, she was talking about gaming, which is not that unusual. Mm-hmm. But she, she's fascinated by serial killers. Yeah. And, like, horror stuff. And she That's wants not me. to... She, she wanted to do something with corpses, I can't remember. But anyway. Yeah, forensics. That's, that's right. Yeah. And she didn't want to be an embalmer. So you've got a hard act to follow. Yeah. So you've got to probably seem normal compared to her, but continue. Okay, so like in my spare time, so I, I work. So that's very um, important to me because I'd like to make money so I can be able to do future goals because yeah. I want to buy a house by the time I'm 25. So definitely working is I do in my spare time. But when I'm not working, like I said, I like to go on Netflix. I like to um, watch YouTube videos. Uh, I love spending time with my family. As you probably heard before, I have four nephews, three nieces. So always spending time with them is always a must, um, especially with my um, my second older sister. She always comes over. We actually work in the same place. So um, when she's working, mum's watching the kids. So when she gets home and when I get home, um, it's always spending time with my two nephews, Jackson and Brock, and then my little niece, Sienna. Um, as well, I love dancing but like competitive dancing and all that so I'll give you an example on Saturday not Saturday Friday night I just turned music on mum was outside my next door neighbor was outside too and I just dance and while they watch me I'm just crazy like that what, what, what sort of moves are we talking about I always do this one move <laughs> what isn't that the, isn't it's that like kind of it's kind of like the chicken dance yeah. in a way but you just you're not doing this you're moving it that so way. you were in the backyard Front yard, yeah. Front, front yard. Front yard, yeah, where everyone could see me. And this was at like 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> That's what I do. I just Is that dance. a regular occurrence? Like 11 o'clock on the dot? No, not at all. Year, on her front yard. It's 11 o'clock. <laughs> no, 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 no. You. You're like the town alarm clock. I like this. I probably was so noisy the other night because I have my like mini Bose speaker that I put outside as well. Really yeah, they can be. So, yeah. Okay. But by the time 12 o'clock hits, I got to turn that off because mum doesn't like the noise. And... Whoa, 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 hang on. You were doing this for an hour? I was doing it for about two and a half hours, if you really. What was the song? What were the songs? Uh, all different types of song, different genres. I clicked R&B Friday because I have the Apple Music. So I clicked R&B Friday and um, this classical music came on for some reason when it's an R&B Friday. So I was dancing like this by myself in oh, the front yard. Say, this doesn't normally go with like Mozart or Bach No, or no, I, I was mean, 
doing the cha-cha and all that. So, <laughs> so hang on. Do you have like formal training in dancing, or you just no? Okay, we said cha-cha. I'm like, okay, has she learned how to? No. Um, I used to dance. I danced for four years. I so think. you're a good dancer, then. You know what you're doing. I used to be very flexible, and then when I tried the tricks that I used to on the front lawn, I ended up pulling a muscle in my lower back. It really hurt for like three days. You sound like an eighty years old. I do, I'm an old, like not like I'm an old soul, but like Ruby said, she's fifty she, on the inside. <laughs> I are you I, gonna outdo her? Are you fifty on the inside? I don't 51? think I'm. I don't think I'm fifty on the inside. I just people, my parents, like my siblings and all that. They just say that I'm an old person. <laughs> I, I'm like an old person at heart. I'm like an I'm a nana. Okay. And I'm like okay because just the way I dress, I guess because I'm just these pajamas that I wear. They're like nana pajamas. Mm. And you have your blanket. And my blanket. Yeah. Your blanket. Yeah. Tell us about the blanket. Oh no. And we're gonna do because <laughs> your mum told us. Told us. So we gotta. We gotta talk about the blanket. Tell me about the blanket. All right, so I've had this blanket since I was born. So it's, I've had it for 18 years. Um, my brother originally had it before me as well, so he gave it to me. Um, I, so it's very soft around the outside and it's got like bunnies and all that on it. You can't really see them now because they're very faded because it's an old blanket. And I rub the outside of it like this. And now where I've been rubbing, it's got a massive hole in it and then on the outside it's got a massive hole as well. Where the stuffing's falling out. Why, why this? I have no idea. It just feels nice. <laughs> you know when people just have this thing they got to go to sleep, like rubbing their pillow, like my nephew, he rubs his pillow to go to sleep. I rub my How blanket. How old is your nephew? Five. <laughs> I was going to say, your answers were like you were normal compared to Ruby. Now you're kind of getting <laughs> hard with Ruby, like going to bed. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway. I don't want to embarrass you too much. That was fun. Um, social details for people to follow your journey. Mm-hmm. And whatever you say, I will subtitle it below. Yep. I'm not going to try saying your title again. <laughs> so God knows what your social handles are. But. Yeah. Okay. So my Facebook is just Jasmine Alessio. My Instagram is Miss Teen, A-U-S-I-N-T-L, New South Wales, 2019. And Jasmine with a Z. Jasmine with a Z, yes. J A Z M I N E. Is that an Italian spelling or is it a different spelling? No, mum just wanted to be different. She was originally going to spell me J A Z M Y N. J A Z M Y N. Yeah. That would have been very different. Yeah, mum's like, oh, I wasn't going to spell you that way because people would spell your name wrong. I said, people spell my name wrong anyway. They yeah. always give me an S. Yeah. The way I think of it is my name's Jasmine, not Jasmine. It does lend itself to Jazzy G, though. So. Yeah. Okay. Final ten questions. Okay. Yeah. Your turn. All right. I'm ready. I have to change these questions one day. Everyone <laughs> knows what they are now. Okay. So, what is your favorite word? Huggles. I'm sorry, but huggles. That's not a word. It's my word. <laughs> oh, I looked that up in the dictionary. I'm not going to find. Not the dictionary. <laughs> my phone. Huggles. Huggles. When I see my nieces and nephews, I always say, "Come give Jesse a huggle." So it's like a hug, but you cuddle. So it's yeah, huggle. it's a huggle. It's hug and cuddle mixed together. That's like a good name for a brand of nappies, but okay. Yeah, huggies, huggle. Huggles. <laughs> okay, what is your least favourite word? Um, moist. <laughs> Do you want to say that word again? <laughs> no. Say it straight to that camera there. <laughs> moist. <laughs> I hate that word <laughs> so much. <laughs> so when I need to say that word, I just say moit. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, can you, seriously, can you actually say it to that camera without any facial, like just neutral facial expression? Of you? I'm going to smile. Moist. <laughs> People outside watching. Okay. They're watching me say the word moist. Oh. <laughs> What's wrong with that girl? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Question three, what turns you on? Um, I love when my niece laughs. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. What turns you off? And she cries. <laughs> like in the car on the way here. She has like her new voice box. It's like, ah! I hate it. That was a good impersonation. Yeah, it I was. felt like I, I was really there. Mm, thank okay. you. Well, on that subject, what sound or noise do you love? Um, clicking a seatbelt in. Like, click. Yeah. I, I know what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just had to make sure. You get, yeah. you get bonus points for giving me an answer I've never heard anyone give okay. before. Okay, so you know what's coming up next? What mm. sound or noise do you hate? Nails on a chalkboard. 
something like that. Fair enough. Mm. Okay, question seven. Mm -hmm. If you have any one superpower, what would you pick and why? Um, probably uh, mind reading. Just because, like, you can really see, like, what someone's thinking about you, I guess. So you, if they think you're being fake or if they don't like you or if they, like, like you or something like that, probably being able to read people's minds because then I can be like, oh, yep, yep, okay. You might not like the answer. That's a thing with mind reading. Yeah, that's true. But you okay. can't please everyone, so yeah, very true. I'm just going to be myself. Question eight. Mm -hmm. What job or occupation other than your own would you most like to attempt? Um, well, I'm not this occupation just yet, so I'd love to do teaching. I'm going to hopefully, like, after this year, I'm going to probably go into studying mm. teaching. Um, so probably being a teacher because I just love kids so much. Nice. Yeah. Okay, we do need a lot of good teachers. That's something that's very needed in this country. Yeah. Okay, question nine. What job or occupation other than your own would you definitely not like to attempt? Probably being a midwife. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm just remembering what you said out there. Yeah, because I saw my niece being born and, like, like watching it is a great experience, but I would not be able to do what they do. Like, hats <laughs> off to them for what they do. That's It's amazing. And you had to cut the... I, I cut the umbilical cord, yep. How was that? Very tough. Oh. Like, the scissors, you're like, you need to... Mm. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Mm. All right. Final question. Yes. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at... Um, congratulations for making it up. Here's your Nuno's pasta. <laughs> it's Italian, so I'm assuming that you made all your pasta yourself. Yeah. What's your favorite dish? Um, I like a quick sauce. So, so it's a very it's a quick sauce. So it only takes like 20 minutes to make. And um, so it's just like it's a red sauce. Okay. Um, and then you just have pasta with it. So it's got the basil in it. It's got tomatoes. Yeah. Mm, it's good. Okay. Final chance, one more time. Mm -hmm. Moist. Oh, no. Moist. Your eyes are <laughs> just doing that. <laughs> okay. I'm going to thank everyone. Oh, I'm going to stop torturing Jasmine. Jasmine, is there anyone you want to give a shout out to before we finish? Shout out to the fam. Hi, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, thank you for joining me. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Bye. Hey, it's Adrian. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to keep up to date with our interviews, then make sure to subscribe by clicking here. If you'd like to watch some of our interviews right now, then click here. And also make sure to follow us on all our socials right here. Speak to you next time.